Introduce you, no, they haven't. Maybe I should introduce myself. Okay, so. we'll let Richard introduce Thank you, Hazmik. So, Richard Warren, uh, I live here now in Cupertino, although I'm only going to be here another month before I move on again. But I'm from what we call the Global Pre Sales Group. So, I'm an evangelist for HP. So, my focus is based on a lot of competition at the back there. <laughs> I need an amplifier. Ah, talk it out. So, Richard Warren, I'm, I'm from, originally from New Zealand, so if you're wondering where my accent's from, I'm a Kiwi out of New Zealand. Most recently lived before the US in Hong Kong and now over here, and I was actually part of a, a regional SWAT team, which if you like is a big deal team that we move around the APJ region depending on the opportunities and things. So that's my background, and now I'm here actually looking after this demo program, so if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Has meant that's going to be really. <laughs> so, I just wanted to talk about what well, we've talked a lot about adaptive or a, a flexible adaptive infrastructure and what that means to customers and things today. And I guess where that fits into our BCSI, specifically Superdome, that we're talking about, particularly today, because that's where it is. What we've heard from a lot of customers, and I'm sure your customers are no different, I'm sorry, I'm not going to walk because it's. Have it. Um, the situation right now is not what it used to be. I'm sure you've seen the same sort of things. Economic climate has really changed things for IT. Investments now have to be qualified, justified. And worse than that, we need to make sure that everything we do is actually future proof. Because we're all sitting here hoping that the business will turn around and grow in the future. So if I put an infrastructure in today, that in six months' time things improve that I've got to throw it out and start again, then I really haven't helped the business. So we've got to be very agile. We've got to actually make significant inroads into the siloed nature that we had. Now the challenge, I'm sure I'm not telling you guys anything, is business growth, business application growth, things like SOA, things like, uh, what is it, cloud, as everybody's talking about new things coming on that businesses have to start moving towards versus the ability to actually invest in that. So a lot of companies have, I actually think this line is a little bit too high, it's either flat or down, the ability to invest. Their actual dollars they're getting, particularly in budget, is often declining. So that means we have a very large gap here between what the business actually wants, what IT would be desirable to have in implementing new things, compared to what our actual ability to deliver is, is how do I bridge that gap? How do I become more effective? So some of the things that are driving this are the things like rich media applications, SOA, cloud, all those type of new functionalities that's coming out. And you guys know more about that than I would, I would think. The infrastructure is changing. We're changing the storage requirements we're doubling every year, we're changing the number of servers, typically doubling every five years, but we're actually virtualizing, so that probably on average is giving me 10 times the number of or operating systems to manage over any period here. We've got limited budget growth, we've got tribal organizations. Now this is where I'm gonna ask the question, what's a tribal organization? IT gets pissed off enough that they take up spears and go around. <laughs> <laughs> Not close. Within IT. Normally within IT we have things like a SAN group, a Windows group, a Unix group. Um, you, you they develop, develop a kind of a cohesiveness with each other and seeing other groups. And they take up spears between the groups. Right? <laughs> so it really does get that. To, to actually implement servers and things, I actually need them all to work together. But what happens is they work in, hey, I'm in the LAN team, and this guy's on the SAN team, and this guy's on the Unix team, and this one's on the Windows team. They don't work together at all. So when you want to stand a new server up, how many of those teams do you need? <coughs> and if they've taken up spears, and actually one wanders into the wrong territory, and they beat them up and chuck them back, <laughs> it doesn't help. So I like the term tribal organizations, not just siloed. It's actually beyond that. It's almost a violence. And then we have a lot of manual processes. So how do we actually get in there? How do we increase productivity? The thing today is how do I drive cost down? I can drive my cost down by increasing productivity. So my CIO has a bunch of goals. 
which is going to be translated into the business application team goals, which is imposed often on the infrastructure team and sets their goals. So we start to look at, say, the cost benefits of cloud without compromising anything else. How to integrate what we have and prepare for the future because actually cloud is a completely different infrastructure to what I have in my ERP that must continue. So I've got to do all of this new stuff without interrupting anything that I do today. And that's one of the biggest driving points that I see right now is driving CIOs to go grey like I am is how do I bring this new stuff in and keep the shop running and keep the business running without any interruption. This one is sort of what's typical of the industry. We actually spend way too much money on um, maintenance, uh, operations, not enough really over here and certainly not enough in innovation, bringing in those new things. So our operations cost is too high. I'm not going to get more budget. So the only way to do anything there is to drive my operations cost down. And there are a number of ways we can do that and that's where we're talking today. By taking away some of the um, broad portfolio spread we've got today, we can also better leverage the applications we have, make better use of, say, application licenses that we've got, which will leave me additional money to actually fund in the innovation part. So what I need to do is change that pie from where I've got a large chunk here to a much smaller chunk to increase this component significantly. Because, as I said, the pie is not getting bigger. You may notice, and it's deliberate, the pie has actually shrunk because actually the business wants to reduce IT costs significantly. This was actually very similar to what HP's internal project that we've done over the last couple of years was, and this is where we got to, and guess what Mark Hurd said when this was presented to him? Can we make this 20%? Keep driving, don't stop. Keep driving the cost down, and that's what we're doing. Can I ask a, a question about sure. that? Sure. You're, you're saying this is what customers want to see? Yep. So I'm confused about the innovation slice of the pie. Mm -hmm. Why would your end customers want to spend IT budget on innovating in IT? Why not? They need new applications, new functionality, things like going into cloud. It's a new role we haven't done before. This part is keeping what I've got today running, nothing more. So most organizations that but I as an work, end customer, wouldn't I want my vendor, such as HP, to do that innovation on my behalf so that I don't have to hire systems engineers to innovate solutions that would ultimately simply compete with what hopefully you'll do at some point? Uh, I can see that this would make sense for you, yep. but I think it seems like what end customers want to do is to stop innovating. They want to stop having systems engineers on staff yep. and just work on the product, which has its external to IT, right? I, I mean, I see this more as, as the innovation is, is, would be implementing yes. technologies that were yeah. created outside rather than creating them in-house. Correct. Now, let me, because your point I pick up in about three slides, so okay. you led me into that <laughs> one on the, the internal innovation. But, the innovation here is more actually the business innovation. Not the technology innovation, but actually doing new things for the business using IT. Rather than, and that's where we often get lost in here, is too much of IT's budget is spent actually playing with the technology, keeping it going, doing things.